Good afternoon. This is meteorologist DT from WXRisk.com with the latest edition of the Snowstorm Podcast. This video edition uh, coming at you at uh, 4:45 uh, on this Sunday afternoon, January 21st. Let's get right to it. Obviously, it's a beautiful day in the eastern half of the country, and uh, if you're a winter weather lover, things are not looking great. But there is some hope, and we'll get to that as well. We'll start out by taking a look at the snowstorm matrix, and you can see uh, pink. Again, no significant weather events, and the only one is a minor, this moderate snow event here. Next three days for portions of the Midwest. When the upper low goes, when the uh, big system moves to the Great Lakes, there might be some snow in the Midwest there behind it. And then a very minor system, the Ohio Valley, uh, day 7, 8, or 9, around the 29th or 30th. But outside of that, see all that pink? That's all non significant snow. So there you go. Okay, um, let's uh, get started. Now, ideally, this is the atmospheric teleconnections or patterns which cause snowstorms to happen. Remember, now, snowstorms do not happen when you have a low pressure area on a model along the east coast of the United States. You get a lot of weather enthusiasts, a lot of weather hobbyists and weenies that forget this a lot. And they think that because, you know, the GFS has the low here, it's going to do this. That's no, no. The weather models reflect the atmosphere. The atmosphere does not reflect the weather models. So what's important to understand are the overall upper air patterns first. And when things are in place, that's when you get your big snowstorms. And when they're not, that's when you need to be skeptical of weather models. So this is what we ideally want to look for here. So let's let's take a look at this. Ideally, we want to see the Eastern Pacific Oscillation. This is when the ridge goes up to Alaska in the negative phase. OK, now that's ideally what we want to see there. Now, ideally, we want to see the PNA on the ridge on the West Coast, not a trough, but a ridge on the West Coast. And of course, you want to see it extend up into Alaska to bring in the Arctic air. So that's what we want to see with those two things. Now, the um, Arctic Oscillation, we'd like to see negative. That's when you have a hydro blocking over the North Pole, and that displaces the polar vortex southward, which of course keeps the trough over the eastern U.S. often, not always, but often, and keeps the cold air coming in. And then you want to see blocking over Greenland or eastern Canada, somewhere like that, which is the negative phase of the NAO. And what that does is that forces low pressure areas to stay to the south. And of course, finally, the one which is overlooked by everybody, which should not be, is the 50-50 low. Having a big low oh, at the surface and at the upper air over southeastern Canada, Newfoundland, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia. That keeps low pressure systems over the Gulf of Mexico or Texas staying to the south so everybody stays on the north side and you get your big snows. So those are the five things we want to see. Okay, good. Now, what happens? Well, this is the Arctic Oscillation. From Weather Bell, and you can see it goes out till uh, January, till uh, uh, I guess this is really into uh, early February. And you can see that the Arctic Oscillation, we want to look at the green line so much, not the black line. The green line is the ensemble mean. So we want to look here at the green. And you can see it's almost dead flat neutral. It's a, it goes a little bit negative. Eh, I wouldn't call it negative. Let's just call it neutral. Okay, that's what it does here coming up. Now, if we look at the uh, North Atlantic Oscillation, it's positive. And it stays positive most of the t t way through, all the way to Jan February 5th. That's not a good sign for an East Coast snowstorm. If we look at the uh, PNA pattern, well, we remember we saw we wanted it positive to get a ridge on the West Coast bringing the cold air in. But as you can see, through February 5th or 6th here, we see generally a running negative and then br briefly neutral, then negative again. We're looking at the green line here. So this is not positive at all. This means you have a trough on the west coast, on the west coast, on the west coast, which is not what you want to see. Of course, you want to have a ridge there. So that's not a good sign or ideal sign. And then finally, this is the Eastern Pacific Oscillation. We want that to be negative when that means the ridge extends not just on the west coast, but all the way up in the northern Alaska and the Arctic regions. And as you can see, it's positive. It turns somewhat negative in early February or neutral. Let's just say that it turns neutral. Here's February. You can see first right here, the February 1st. So you can see that it goes neutral, the green line here. But all the way through here, it's positive. So that's not good. Now, let's take a look what this looks like. Now, this is the over. This is the upper map here. This is uh, the GFS from, I think, uh, yesterday, Saturday afternoon. And it has the trough on the West Coast, as you can see. There, there's your negative PNA and your positive EPO. So big low pressure here. So that's a positive EPO. 
And of course, here's our a trough on the west coast here, and that means you have a ridge here. So the flow goes like this, and all the cold air is kept up in here. Okay, well, we know that's coming. That's, that's not a big deal. And this is what happens uh, by, um, uh, by uh, this Tuesday when the big low pressure area moves through and brings rain to everybody. So this is the service map. So this is Monday. We got snow in Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska. Pretty good snowstorm for these folks in here. And then there's your low pressure area. You can see that. And there's the cold front here. We have southerly winds bring up the warm air. So this is rain for everybody. And the rain for the Midwest, Mississippi Valley, and then for the East Coast on, on Tuesday. Well, okay, we know that's coming. That's not a surprise. Now, this is for next Saturday, okay, six, seven days out. And the big trough comes in on the 26th of the West Coast, a very big trough here, and it moves here now by the 27th of January. And there's a big low in the Gulf of Alaska, which means Pacific Jet. And then you don't want to see that for East Coast winter weather because this is a positive EPO. When you have a big low in the Gulf of Alaska, that's a positive EPO. So you're flooding the east the, with Pacific air. We have a ridge on the west on the east coast to see that. So this is a mild pattern here. So next weekend, it's going to be probably as mild as we had this weekend. So if you like mild winter weather, you're going to love the next seven days. So, and here it is. Look, the map is almost identical. Okay, we have a brief cool down after the cold front comes through the middle of next week. So the high pressure is here. All right, and now we got a turn flow. Here is the trough and the low up in Minnesota. Southwest winds. Well, that's that's a mild pattern there. You can see that coming. And there's more rain, a big rain, major rainstorm coming for the Midwest and potentially the East Coast. High pressure right here. You can see that. South, strong southerly flow, very strong winds. Could be some thunderstorms here, folks. Could be some severe weather on uh, the 28th or the 29th. So watch out for that. Snow in the Ohio Valley, so that could be decent for those guys in there. That's part of the eastern U.S., certainly. But a lot of rain for everybody else. And, and the East Coast and the Southeast really could use the rain. Let's be quite honest about this. All right, now here's the 28th, uh, 228 hours, because excuse me, January 29th and 30th. And there's our trough, which is bringing the rain. There it is. And there's another one coming in here. So the, And the flow is like this. So this is not a great winter weather pattern going to the end of January. Now, things begin to change a little bit as we move towards February. So we see the ridge trying to form here in the eastern Pacific. So uh, remember, we had a trough in the eastern Pacific. Now we have a ridge. So let's go back and take a look at it one second. Okay, there's our, there's our trough in the eastern Pacific. Now look at February 1st. Now it's beginning to change. And we have, now the problem is, is that initially the ridge is here, and that places your trough here, which places another ridge on the east coast. So while the pattern's trying to change, February 1st, 2nd, and 3rd could be pretty mild on the East Coast, especially the southeastern states. Certainly not cold. And if we look at the temperature anomalies, this is for the 6 to 10 day. Yeah, it's pretty mild over the eastern half of the country. I mean, there is, here's the Mississippi River, so everybody here is pretty warm relative to normal. Now, obviously, like Virginia, the temperature anomalies are not as cold. So New England has typically much colder normal temperatures here at the end of January. So the temperature anomalies are going to be stronger. So uh, you have to keep that in mind, but it is a mild pattern. Now, at 360 hours out, we begin to see things change even more. There you go. Okay, that's 258 hours, February 1st. This is now February 5th. Now the ridge begins to amplify and begins to push up into Alaska. So the EPO begins to go negative. So that's good. We like seeing that. Here's our ridge. It's not really on the west coast yet. So that places the trough here. And we have still have a bit of a southeast ridge, but it's fading away. The vortex is right, very strong polar vortex coming southward. So maybe we're beginning to see the cold air begin to return here into the middle Atlantic and the Tennessee Valley. So this has some potential maybe February 5th to see some sort of winter weather over the eastern U.S. Don't know who yet or which areas. Looks like Ohio Valley, New England, maybe Mid-Atlantic, Tennessee Valley. We'll have to see. And look at our temperature anomalies. Now, this is over five days. This is February 1 to February 5. So we can see a lot of cold air is really developing up in the western Canada. So that's, that's good. You want, you want to see that cold air developing up in here. Okay, and the temperature anomalies, which were really quite warm, now begin to fade as the ridge moves off the coast. So now these temperatures are only... A, two degrees above normal for early February. So this has got some potential. It's getting better. That's the whole point here. Now, if we look at the 16 to 20 day, this is from yesterday. 
this takes us and takes the overall pattern for the 11 to 15 day, finds the top 10 analogs, and then rolls the pattern over. So that's why I often refer to this model here, or this technique, as the rollover model. It takes the 11 to 15 day pattern and rolls it over into the 16 to 20 day. So this is 16 to 20 days. So this is into Earth. This is beyond early February. This is February like 4th to February 8th. And we can see uh, that it's pretty mild. These are our temperatures here. Now, this was from two days ago, so maybe it's changed a little bit. But you can see it's quite mild here, but it's also quite wet. So we'll see if the new one, when it comes out tomorrow, if it's any different. Now, there was some talk earlier about sudden stratospheric warming. So this is from the folks in WSI, and Dr. Ventress issued this. He said, look like a lot of models are showing sudden stratospheric warming. But the updated version, you can see uh, Dr. V here on January uh, 10th began to, uh, you can see that he talked about it here quite strongly. And this was the updated one. And you can see the warming is no longer there. So the models have really backed off the sudden stratospheric warming. Now the February European model, this is quite, it's, it, this is showing precipitation. You can see it's pretty wet over the eastern half of the country. So that's interesting. And it's also somewhat colder. If you look at the January, at the December European model forecast for February, it, all the yellow was much stronger to the north and it was much stronger. So you can notice New England is normal. Mid Atlantic is kind of normal, only a half a degree above normal. The Midwest is normal. Again, this was much warmer in the previous run. So this is a trend for a colder February, or at least a seasonally cold February. Now let's look at the MJO, the Maddie and Julian oscillation. So here we can see the MJO, now this is January 20th, and we're focusing on this point here. There it is in phase four. This is phase five, phase six, phase seven, and phase eight, obviously. So the model projections have it going into early February into phase seven, you can see that. So it goes to four, five, six, and seven by early February. That's the European model. Now, some of the extended European model, this is the, the European monthly, and for, for the 19th, you can see it does go into phase eight by the middle of February. Okay, well, that's good. Well, what does that mean? Well, this is the extended one on, run by uh, Kyle, Kyle uh, MacRitchie, yeah. And uh, you can see that he also shows in mid-February, uh, it goes into uh, phase seven and then phase eight. Now, what does that mean? Well, for temperatures in January, remember we saw it was in phase three, now it just moved to phase four. So look how warm the temperature correlation is right here. That's a warm pattern in phase four. This is phase five, warm in the east and the Midwest. Phase six, warm in the east and the Midwest. Now, temperatures begin to ch now changes, but when we get into phase seven and eight, we're now in February. So this is February. What happens in phase eight? Well, in phase eight, we see some cooling over the eastern U.S., and then it's much cooler in phase one and phase two, and even to phase three in February. So that's one of the reasons why a lot of forecasters are somewhat bullish about February. Let's take a look at these patterns. What does this look like here? Now, January phase three. Remember, we, we were in phase three and phase four, and you can see I drew the lines in here so you can see the jet stream, and notice the strong ridge, that's what the R stands for, ridge, in the jet stream over the eastern U.S. and a big trough on the west coast. And that would produce a very warm pattern, obviously. And bang, sure enough, that, that's what we're seeing right now. Now, this is phase seven. Now, remember how we show it's going to go into phase seven by early February. Well, this shows the development of a deep trough over the Midwest, which is exactly what the models are showing on the 360 hour. Let's go back. I'll show you what I'm talking about. That, there you go. See the trough over the Midwest? Okay, so we advance it and go up to the MJO. You can see that. There it is. See how that works? That's really cool. When you get your MJO and your models working together, it's a good to be a meteorologist. You can make these calls two, three, four weeks out. It's just really, really good to see that. Now, what happens when it gets into phase eight in February? Boom! The East Coast snowstorm pattern. In La Nina, when you have phase eight in February, that's a snowstorm pattern. Big low develops on the East Coast. It goes, that's, there you go. The bada boom, bada bing. That's what that is. Now, we'll see if that actually happens, but that's what you want to see. If you go into phase one, this is also a pretty good pattern here. And then finally, if we go into phase two, now phase two changes, 
but phase two is maybe the ice storm pattern because what happens here is the trough shifts to the Rockies on the west coast deep trough here uh, some blocking over Greenland and Iceland not great but what happens is you have a flat ridge over the southeastern United States so you have a strong temperature boundary which produces the atmosphere too warm for snow but potentially ice at the lower levels so that's something to watch out for in phase two as well so there you go and then finally you can see this in more detail here now the other method you can, which is reason to get excited about is the Bering Sea rule and you can see here that uh, the data shows that at back in January 10th and 12th it supported uh, a pretty big trough over the eastern United States here potentially a snowstorm pattern and if we look again this was from January 13th it also showed indications of a snowstorm pattern of some type or winter storm or a trough in early February so there are the, the new ones are even more bullish than this I did not get a chance to call them up and post them but I will later on now the another thing you can look at is the Rossby wave model now what is this you take the Rossby wave which is the long wave patterns that move across the earth and you follow the pattern into its logical progression and what you find out is that you can often see general weather trends generally speaking a few weeks out when the Rossby wave model is working now it doesn't always work but this time it seems to be working pretty good now this is from January 9th and this shows you the overall temperature excuse me 500 millibar anomalies positive and negative so so this would be a trough here this is January 9th and this is valid for end of January and the first of February see that the 30 to the third big trough here and this is for January 4th to January 8th big trough here pretty impressive looking now but that's January 9th why are you showing that DT well this is if you continue it now this is the one from also this is now mid-February a bit of a break here and then the new trough comes in for the middle of February you can see that very clearly now this is the uh, this is then we take this continuing out into the middle and end of February we can see persistent deep trough over the eastern US very impressive here this is 19th to 23rd this is 24 to 28 and you can see deep trough here deep trough here so again pretty impressive looking cold pattern here for much of February according to the one from January 9th now this is the new one from January 20th here is January 10th to 14th now initially it's not that aggressive with the cold air or the trough again it's got a moderate pattern a weak ridge here a bit of a trough here not too threatening but once you get to mid-February deep trough here on the Rossby wave model blocking over Greenland this is interesting very interesting to say the least and then if we go further out in time this is January 20th to 24th and January 24th to March 1st huge trough over the eastern US in mid-February the 20th to 24th very impressive and then if you go into February more of the same uh, but uh, again you know uh, then it begins is off in mid in mid March here the pattern begins to break down and move to more more towards a March pattern here our temperatures just to give you an idea this is the temperature uh, again from the Rossby wave model look how cold these temperatures are remember mid February saw how cold it was look at this stuff in here Wow look at this in here cold stuff indeed this is extremely cold here in mid February we'll see if that happens it might not but that's what the Rossby wave model is showing and as we go into February and March look how cold it is for March for everybody so also that that this would indicate an extended winter into the first half of March anyway so the summary is 10 days two weeks not great for snowstorms but there's a lot of hope a lot of reason to be optimistic about February so uh, I'm not obviously I'm not sold on any sort of sudden stratospheric warming I don't see that happening but there are possibilities especially if we move into phase eight in February phase one and phase two um, in mid-February so we'll see how it plays out this is meteorologist DT from weather risk I'll see you on the Facebook page and on the Twitter page